I don't know why, but I would like to talk about the history of PlayStation cases and box art in a very over-explained, unnecessarily complicated way. Uh, there's so many things I could say and rant about, and I, for a while I was like, I don't really have an outlet to do this, and then I thought, wait a minute, yes I do, so. Why don't we do that? I pulled out a bunch of things, and let's talk about PlayStation. PlayStation 1, the PSX, the original PlayStation. I just like saying PlayStation, but you can say whatever you want. However, this one, we're kicking it off with what is a very unusual circumstance because this console launched with three different kinds of cases and box arts. And it's one where it's a bit of an outlier because for most folks, uh, especially if you're not into collecting video games, then you probably don't have any of these or you've, you've never had any experience with these things. But Sony stopped using these about uh, a little less than a year uh, before the, uh, well, after the PS1 came out. So these did not stick around for too long. And because of that, there's only about 109 in total that uh, 109 different PS1 long box variants, uh, which as a subgenre means for collecting purposes, it's actually quite attainable, but there's three versions primarily, and because Sony also stopped doing these uh, so soon, a lot of publishers eventually offered standard jewel case versions of these games, like some of the ones that you're seeing right now. Uh, so it's really up to you oftentimes which version you would like to collect, and uh, if you care about having the collection looking nice and clean on your shelf, then usually you might want to avoid the long box variants. I find them very unique because they're part of PlayStation history, but we have three versions. So you have the, uh, basically it's like all cardboard. This is straight up all cardboard. You open the thing, you've got a <laughs> long version of the manual. You've also got you know, whatever, whatever little extra goodies there were in there. The disc is up here and you've got this little uh, piece of styrofoam. Now on the second hand market these are usually hard to find <laughs> because for most owners back then they just chucked this thing away. So sometimes it's hard to actually find this thing and they can usually be very thin but sometimes they're a little bit thicker. Uh, so there's that version. Again, all cardboard, baby. All cardboard, which means it's also susceptible to uh, tearing and ripping, which also is another part of why these things aren't uh, always readily available in circulation. Now, you might think this looks pretty familiar because this is just straight up a Sega, a Sega Saturn, Sega CD case, and... Uh, this one's a very good clean example. Now this one is missing the foam. The foam would go right here by these little uh, sort of pucks or these little protrusions right here. But this would be an example where you actually need that manual because uh, a big thing with PS1 is that the manual plays a dual purpose. Not only is it a beautiful paper manual, but it also serves as the front cover. And so in the situation of the uh, Sega Saturn, Sega CD cases, you need that manual. If you don't have the manual for something like Tekken, still looks complete, right? And so for some people that's actually a okay if they don't have the manual, but for these you need them. This one I like uh, a lot because it's like a mix of plastic and also cardboard. So the iconic PS1 Ridge design, it's actually a real physical molded plastic here. You can hear that, it sounds lovely. And there's just a very thin piece of paper that's uh, it, I adhered onto this and also the side. Uh, now this actually makes them somewhat problematic long term because the adhesive can come off and these can start to peel. But it is primarily a plastic case. Still have your manual and your foam right here. This one is juicy thick, liking that. And uh, yeah, those are PS1 long boxes. Again, not really a whole lot of them, but I think they are so cool for what they are. Now, a lot of people are probably going to be much more familiar with this guy right here, which is your standard PlayStation 1 jewel case. The vast majority of PS1 games have these. Uh, so, you know what's going on here. You uh, might even be more familiar with these just based off of standard uh, music CDs, but your manual would be right there. And your manual in this case serves a purpose, that dual purpose of also being your front cover. So incomplete, uh, incomplete PS1 games often look very incomplete if you don't have that manual. But most people are pretty familiar with these. Uh, now really there's one other thing that we have to look at with PS1 games, which is the um, double layer ones, which, this is interesting because, so you've got a situation where uh, PS1 CDs, you know, they obviously don't hold a ton of data. Well, 
back then at least it was considered a lot of data, but some games still needed more than one disc. Uh, infamously, Final Fantasy VII. A lot of people are certainly familiar, uh, familiar with this one, um, which this is a game where you can get away with not having the manual because that's something where they basically use two backs of the standard jewel case, right? And so the middle portion is really your uh, unique guy here, you know what I'm saying? So it's actually connecting two standard back pieces and that's where you will have the spindle for extra discs and your manual would sit in this little cubby right here. But the variations that come into play, which I find fascinating is that while there's situations where I don't know why this is the case, but there are, you know, double stacked PS1 games, that don't need them. <laughs> they come with one disc. And it's not even something where they're reusing the cases. It's, uh, you know, you'll open this thing and you can see the very first one for SimCity 2000. It's got a uh, embossed PlayStation logo on this. This is specifically made to not have a disc there and just fill this blank space. And then you've got your manual on that middle portion. This middle portion does not have any spindles on it. So this is also a, uh, you know, a particularly made uh, middle portion just to accommodate the fact that it is making all this extra space that it doesn't necessarily need. And there's your SimCity 2000 on the back with the desk and your spare manual. Now some games might also have four discs, which means they're gonna use spindles on everything. Right there, right there. Another one on the back there. And then your fourth disc on the very end. I always found that a bit noteworthy for PlayStation 1, especially because in the later cycle, you run into a lot of these uh, double layer jewel, jewel disc games that they don't actually need, uh, need it. And uh, that's also why when you're putting it on your shelf, it can sometimes get a little bit messy with how you've got it alphabetized or where you decide to place these things. And sometimes because they're a dual layer and you can't really like, you know, if you run out of space, you're gonna either Mess it, uh, mess it up to where it won't fit or there's some loose space on that particular shelf. But that's primarily what we're looking at for PlayStation 1. Now I will say we're not gonna look at greatest hits because your boy don't play like that, but uh, you know, if it wasn't obvious, we're looking at purely black label and uh, NTSC games. We don't have all day to go through everything, although I could certainly humor that someday. PlayStation 2, also known as uh, I don't know, do you like video games? Because we have a ton of them. I mean, a ridiculous amount. And that's also why uh, for our beautiful, sexy example here, Jack 2, this is actually gonna cover a good portion of the library because <laughs> most PS2 games, they look like this uh, here in North America for Sony's labeling. They went with this, you know, black bar up top, PlayStation 2, colored PlayStation logo. I mean, that holds true for most regions, but same for the spine right here. It's just a standard black case. Um, like a tall style DVD case. Most people think these are kind of vanilla. I like PS2 cases a lot, if only because they are also extremely, well, they're consistent throughout the whole library, like I said, but they're also very durable. So just opening it, you get that satisfying click, uh, click that helps you sleep at night. And then when you close it again, you know this thing is closed. You just know it. And that, that is something that I think we can't necessarily ignore nowadays. Uh, but looking on the inside, you know, a nice good spindle holds the game in place. Uh, these games travel really well in transit when you're buying them secondhand. But you've got the iconic memory card holder up there, which, um, you know, you take the game to your uh, to a friend's house. You were probably using that thing. And so when it comes to variations for, for PS2, I mean, we've got something where, you know, on the odd occasion where a DVD wasn't holding enough storage, or maybe it comes with a demo, right? So for Dragon Quest here, um, you would have an extra little spindle holder in the middle. And these are special cases where they've got these little protrusions in the middle to hold this little thing, right? So this is something where if you have, if you need replacement cases for these particular PS2 games, if you want to keep it as OEM as possible, you need to find these particular cases that can hold this middle portion, especially because there is a little PlayStation logo right in that bottom left corner right there, which means it's, it's a genuine PlayStation product. So um, just a little something to keep in mind if you are looking to collect, but that's what you would normally have for any game that might need an additional disc. And this is also where uh, we're getting into the accessory landscape uh, landscape of PlayStation history, right? So uh, PS1, of course, had a, it's, it's a fair share of 
accessories, but PS2, something where they want to make this stuff a bit more prominent on the box art. So Sony's uh, number one accessory would have been the iToy, right? So examples here, you'd have this labeling for consumers where it says um, iToy USB camera. And this is just kind of like one example. The more standardized, uh, standardized version would be on anti-grab where it's uh, a white label, got that uh, iToy camera actually pictured on there says required i mean now when you, you were buying these brand new back then oftentimes they were in big boxes with the itoy camera but on the second hand market you would just see that and know that okay this was an itoy game uh but really the big change for playstation 2 cases not even the box art was around 2008 or so so after playstation 3 came out it was somewhere around that time but essentially sony switched over to a PlayStation 2 case that was a little bit lighter, primarily because they swapped over to, well, they just got rid of the memory card holder, essentially. Um, and this is a good tell-all for if you are buying PS2 games on the secondhand market. If you know that a game came out around 2006, uh, 2003, or whatever else may be the case, and it has a case like this, then you would know right off the bat that the case was replaced. Not necessarily a problem, but if you're a stickler for that kind of thing and you want what you want the case that was appropriately given with that game when it was brand new at the time, then you would have to keep out for that. But these are still genuine uh, PS2 cases in that there is a PlayStation logo right up there. And the spindle on these are different as well, which they're a little bit weaker and they, the disc pops out, which is why these are not really the best uh, or all that favorable. But um, also another thing where they do have special versions for a second disc as well. But that's that's gonna cover most of the PS2 library. Again, we're, gonna, we're not gonna cover everything also because there's just so much that, you know, there's too many fringe cases, but uh, no pun intended, but that's uh, most of the PlayStation 2 right there. PSP PlayStation Portable. I love the PSP and I think part of why I liked it at the time so much is that it felt very premium for what it was. And I think a lot of that goes into the cases and box art, which you got a physical hard case. Uh, you had these clear transparent cases and Sony was keeping the, the theming uh, appropriately here where again, a black bar up top says PSP, colored PlayStation logo. Uh, now I do wanna point out, you have this little game controller icon in the top right. Now that was something where uh, eagle eye observers would also notice that that was the XMB icon. That was also a good way to sort of differentiate it from the other thing Sony was doing at the time, which was UMD video. Now. Of course, right away, most people are gonna be able to spot a UMD video case because it's got a silver trim up top, but you'll see the little film reel, uh, film, film reel in the top right corner that shows this was a UMD video case, not a video game, but there is your UMD right there. And you know, PSP for the most part was also very simple. I like these cases a lot as well, just because again, it feels uh, premium for the most part. And uh, well, the only, <laughs> Odd thing that I always find about PSP is that the manual, because when you open the case for PSP, you've got this um, only one middle holder, right, right in that, uh, right in the center, and because of that, that means pretty much every PSP manual in existence has this noticeable crease uh, bend in the middle, right, where that's where it was being held as it was being transported from the factory to retail, and it just sat like that long enough to where every PSP manual is going to have that little bend in it. Now, there is more to talk about for PSP, but I think we should just move on to PlayStation 3 next before we get into what Sony kind of did with both these platforms and their cases. So right off the top, we can discuss uh, my pride and joy here, the PlayStation 3. Big, beautiful, sexy, and the cases, I like these a lot as well. Uh, now, I don't know if it's because I obviously uh, just enjoy PlayStation 3 a lot, but uh, you know, this was something where the initial run of cases, and I remember at the time, uh, Sony got a lot of criticism primarily for that choice of font, right? Where it was the uh, the Spider-Man font, as some like to call it, but it is, it is a, a font that has a name. It's called uh, Mata, I think. M-A-T-A. -A. I don't think it's the exact same font. It's like a slight variation, but for the most part, you've got the PlayStation 3 logo on the side here, another colored logo, and then you've got this uh, spare space up top, which was uh, also something that Blu-ray Blu -ray movies were doing at the time. Now those were blue cases, of course, but they would have that top portion that were completely blank. Also HD DVD had that as well, but um, 
These early PS3 cases will have a blue uh, Blu-ray logo on the far left, and then another Amato font PlayStation 3 transparent logo on the right. Uh, and these I think are great, if only because uh, the spindle on them I think is the best one out of all of PlayStation history. The games just hold in there so well, so tight, if you will. And uh, it's just something where in my experience they, they never fall out. You put them in, it's a satisfying click, you know it's in there good. These games travel well. Um, and I like the I like the clear the case of it. I feel like the sort of design that Sony was going for at the time where PS3 had this avant-garde marketing campaign. I just sort of enjoy what they were going for at the time. So most PS3 cases uh, early on, they looked like this. Uh, although this is where, again, we're gonna get into variations of, you know, little modifiers that Sony would add to the box art. So this was before the rebranding. So we still have the side logos there in the map font, but um, something like Warhawk is a little bit unique in that the, uh, initial labels that Sony was using with multiplayer only and PlayStation Network exclusive. So Warhawk's really the only one that had labels like this until it was a more standardized process of PlayStation Network and only on PlayStation if the game was an applicable exclusive. And of course, if there's also some accessories, so SingStar is a good example here, PlayStation Eye, you have the SingStar microphone required, but same thing where it's a clear case. And um, well, the big thing is the uh, side view where when it comes to the spine you've got the little red uh, red square right there with PS3 as a symbol in that uh, right in the center now again I like these but the problem is when they're in your shelf all lined up what Sony did around 2009 and to Sony's uh, benefit they did need to do this which is completely relaunch and rebrand uh, re PlayStation 3 because the console obviously had a bit of a uh, an identity problem still, right? Especially because it was so expensive. So it was a, com a complete rebrand with the PlayStation 3 Slim. I often think that 2009 really was the proper year of PlayStation 3 where the software was really kicking in, uh, kicking it into high gear and it was a new low price point. All the, the marketing material and things like that were fresh with the Kevin Butler campaign. But this also meant we had new cases and box art and because it launched in 2009, from there onward, most PS3 games did have this box art now. But when you do that side profile, that's where this is going to stick out amongst all your games if you are into collecting and you have to make that conscious decision of, do I want to separate my PlayStation 3 games and have them all pre-2009 in one section and then, or just mix and match them so it's all properly alphabetized. I've seen many, uh, many a collector kind of have that internal struggle of how do they want to organize their games but for the most part these are exactly the same uh, but a bit of a ps2 situation here so the clear case uh, there is a difference which is the blu-ray logo moves to the far right and then there is just no playstation 3 logo up there so something where if you know for a fact you have a pre-2009 um you know or early 2009 ps3 game with the side logos and whatnot but it's got in this case then obviously you would know that they're mixed uh, mixed and matched this one in particular really bothers me because it's a bit more noticeable versus ps2 um and then you've got the modifiers coming in for accessories, which would uh, be really PlayStation Move. <laughs> so when Sony launched the PlayStation Move, you've got this big obnoxious blue logo here saying it's either PlayStation Move compatible or in some cases PlayStation Move required. And this was also something where Sony was being <laughs> being a bit slick. So the Sly Collection is a true PlayStation exclusive, only on PlayStation, a label that is certainly appropriate for that game. But we move over to Bioshock Infinite and it still says only on PlayStation because Sony wants to have that uh, plausibility that, hey, we're using that language because only on PlayStation 3 can you have PlayStation Move support. And then there's also Wonder Book, Book of Spells, which has this uh, sort of obnoxious branding with the Wonder Book logo and the sort of gold bar uh, and that would also extend to the side as well but that also extends for PlayStation Move support so you've got that one little uh, one little blue icon there showing you it's a move game with the arc symbol 
another little variation would be when Sony was doing the PlayStation Collection game. So on PlayStation 3, uh, you would have this huge gold bar that would also be on the side. You'd spot that right away. You'd know this was the infamous collection, God of War Saga, something like that. Um, and these were also a bit unique as well. So you've got, um, it was specially made with um, the metal clips for the uh, extra disc that the game would need to hold, which PS3 didn't necessarily always need an extra disc because Blu-rays at the time were very big, a lot of storage compared to Xbox 360, which oftentimes did have to use multiple DVDs for certain games. But these uh, particular PS3 cases are definitely different with this uh, center section here, which is another way to spot right away that this was a, a case unique to this particular game. Now here's where it gets really wacky if it wasn't already wacky before. For some reason, uh, around the time that PlayStation 4 came out, which was primarily a blue, a blue box art, Sony moved on to this, which is basically the same thing before, uh, but now it's blue. The This little uh, piece on the box art would be blue. It would say only on PlayStation if it was a PlayStation exclusive, but the spine was blue as well, so there's technically three variations. However, there's only like nine, ten, there's not many of these. So for some reason, Sony swapped to them, likely due to customer feedback. They decided right away that we're not going to do this anymore. Uh, so if you want a full set of these, it's actually not bad. You can get a full set with uh, only a handful of titles that eventually that were shipping with these and then Sony reverted back to the, um, the black gray gradient version. Now, you wanna go, uh, you know, really just, I mean, this, this, will, this will make you lose sleep at night. We got this one right here, which is um, a, it's a PlayStation 3 game with a download code for PS3 and PlayStation 4. There's no disc in here, it's a downloadable game voucher. But this monstrosity which exists in the PlayStation ecosystem, if you for some reason wanted to buy this and you wanted it on your shelf, I cannot believe this was allowed. PS3 and PS4, I think this is the only example of this happening. Um, this one is also sealed by the way for the pure fact that I wanted to have this on hand just to show you how disgusting this looks. I would chuck it across the room but I can't bring myself to do that because it's still a PS3 case at the end of the day. But now we can go back to PlayStation Portable because around the time that Sony were, they were rebranding uh, re the PlayStation 3, PSP had a little bit of this as well with a somewhat somewhat similar thing, right? So uh, again, the sort of blackish gray uh, gradient bar up top, it would have the PlayStation Network logo if, if applicable. It would have only on PlayStation if, if applicable, uh, but also something where they changed the spine on this as well. Really don't know why they insisted on doing that because really all they did was remove the PlayStation logo. And this is partly because at the time uh, around 2009 with the PS3 rebranding, they also stopped using the colored PlayStation logo. They went to a flat transparent uh, or white or whatever the case may be for the marketing material, but they went with a solid PlayStation logo, uh, solid color, solid colored PlayStation logo instead. That always bothered me back then. I, I always wondered why did they abandon the iconic colored logo? But then again, most companies to this day are still simplifying and flattening their logos if it wasn't already flat and simple enough as is. Is this a case for ants? PlayStation Vita, mm, chef's kiss, wonderful, and also cute little tiny cases, so adorable. And uh, these are about as proprietary as it gets. There's no mistaking it. This is a Vita case. You would have to basically make sure you get a genuine Vita case if you're looking to make sure your Vita stuff is complete. There's no finding anything else to accommodate these little things outside of just a third party case for all the little um, cartridges. But yeah, I mean, the inside, basic. There is nothing in here except the little holder and you still have a um, little clip on the side for your non-existent manuals because the vast majority of Vita games do not have manuals because we are now getting into platform cycles that stopped doing manuals. So for PS Vita, I mean, if there's anything over here, it's like a, a little piece of paper for a download code or something, which of course this thing is not going to hold down a piece of paper. So they're usually just flying around inside there haphazardly, although there's there are certainly examples of, you know, games throwing in little art cards or something, and then this is holding it pretty nicely. But 
In terms of the front imagery, I mean, not really a whole lot going on here. Sony was Sony was fairly consistent with you know having PlayStation Network on there, if applicable, only on PlayStation, if applicable. So like The Wolf Among Us. Not, it's not online, it's not only on PlayStation, so looking pretty blank there, although a lot more clean, I would say. Um, and then the side profile, right? You've got just a standard PS Vita logo there. These were all the same across the board, so you're really not gonna see anything that's gonna stick out or look too unnecessary unless you're into a lot of the Vita big box collecting from like the limited run where they had a bunch of those different sized cases and things like that, which is kind of a ugly mess on a shelf if you're asking me. But with standard cases, these little guys look pretty clean when they're all right next to each other. And of course the front, you're also, you're also gonna see the uh, dreaded memory card required logo, which most of these are going to have which means that your Vita is gonna need those little expensive proprietary memory cards. Uh, any other variations? I mean, we're talking about the collections that, again, Sony was shipping on PlayStation 3. They kept up with the um, sort of gold labeling where it's a uh, white, uh, white background for the front art, but you've got the gold um, trim here saying collection, this little uh, plaque on the middle, this sort of skew, uh, skeuomorphic looking plaque. And then on the side again where, and mine's a little bit sun faded, but you can see that there's again like a little little gold bar there. So on the shelf, you would see that this is a collection game. And then there was uh, later into the life cycle, PlayStation TV compatibility. So there was a little label that was added for publishers to put on their box art if they did have a game that had PS TV support, although it did not show up on the spine. So PS Vita, not a whole lot to look at, but Kept it simple, and if it were, you know, if it were my decision, that's how I'd have a lot of these things uh, looking. That way, it looks a lot cleaner on a shelf. PlayStation 4, a wonderful machine that I think over time is going to really do quite well when it comes to the fondness people have for it, its library, how many games are on it. I mean, it's doing quite well even to this day. Uh, so something where I think it will truly stand the test of time. And that's also why the cases and box art are, are kind of in the PS2 situation where for the most part, this example I'm holding right now is going to look the part for the vast majority of the PS4 uh, life cycle. Standard blue cases, they were um, about the same height as PlayStation 3 games, which that machine had cases uh, sized down a little bit from the PS2 style cases. But, you know, nice clear blue cases, uh, a big bar up top saying PS4. It would say only on PlayStation if applicable, although Sony, with later reprints stopped using this because their games were eventually shipping on PC. But you would have something like, say, Tekken 7, so, uh, you know, looks a little bit blank there, but still looks nice and clean, and, you know, the spines don't really change for the vast majority of games unless accessories are applicable. And uh, this is the, the thing I don't like about PS4 cases is that they are flimsy, weak, frail, I mean, I don't know what it is, if these things are, uh, if they have sickle cell anemia, I really don't know, but um, in transit, they tend to get broken up a lot. The spindle is extremely poor. That's why there's actually, you know, little things you can do to try to keep the game in there better. Or if it's, um, if the game is sealed, if you're a sealed person, you can actually sort of recenter the disc and click it back in because so many new games, when they're being shipped, uh, the disc will fall out of the spindle. So the number one problem with PS4 games I find, uh, or PS4 discs, is simply that they are just weak AF. Just recently I had to ship back uh, my copy of Cuphead on PlayStation 4 because Amazon shipped it in a giant bubble mailer, which is basically suicide for those games and it showed up just mauled. I mean, it, it really looked like a little uh, bear was inside and mauled the case and then somehow we're, it was able to leave the bubble mailer without me knowing. Um, but PlayStation VR is gonna be something where we have multiple variations of box art, right? So, got a lot of different examples, uh, which is mostly gonna have this bar up top that says it's a PlayStation VR game. Uh, now, if it's a PSVR game, it'll simply say PSVR game, but on the bottom corner is where you'll see what accessories you would need. If the bare minimum was the headset and the camera, which, I mean, that's all PSVR functionality, it would have just that. Uh, but there are cases where um, if you need move controllers, it will show the move controllers, despite something like Skyrim VR having multiple ways to 
control the game. It'll only show the minimum on the front. The back is where you're gonna wanna see all those uh, labels saying that Move is either required or that it has PlayStation Move compatibility. Or in the case of Farpoint, a PlayStation VR aim controller. Although Farpoint, naughty naughty, on the side, it does not have the little PlayStation VR icon showing that it's a, that it's a PSVR game. Just a little discrepancy. There's, you know, for most PSVR games, it's going to have that. Um, and something like, say, Trover Saves the Universe, where it's an optional uh, PlayStation VR mode. It'll say PlayStation VR mode included with uh, the same labeling that we saw prior, but it'll, it'll say enhance your gameplay with PSVR. So that's a little something you'll notice when you're, you've got a bunch of these, right? Easy to spot out in your collection with the little PSVR icons. Now, Later, PS4, uh, later PS4 games, of course, are gonna be finding themselves in a situation where there are PS4 to PS5 upgrades. Now, I actually don't have any of these games on hand because, well, as a collector and somebody that likes buying physical games, I started buying PlayStation 5 games immediately. So there's very few uh, situations, well, really, again, I don't have any, where there is a proper PS4 to PS5 upgrade label on the, on the case, but that is something that uh, publishers started doing if their game offered that uh, that upgrade path from PS4 to PS5. And that is something where it's a one-way path on PlayStation, not quite like smart delivery. Granted, it certainly does the vast majority of what people are looking to do, which is go from one console to the newer one, not necessarily backwards, but in the case of Sony, you are upgrading. So you're only using the PS4 disc as a way to authenticate and play and download the PlayStation 5 digital version. Anyway, the reason why I'm holding Little Nightmares 2 is an example of something where the game shipped only on PlayStation 4 and then eventually added a free PS5 digital upgrade. So this would not have the label, but if it's launching day and date PS4, PS5, and there's an upgrade path that's there, then it would normally have that little label. And you know, on PS4 where there's, I think, way too many variations, but again, it's something where if a game has online connectivity or it, it, or it requires a download, excuse me, then there would normally be a very tiny label somewhere, either from Sony or from the publisher, explaining that you would need to uh, have internet to finish, uh, to play the, the full game and the full experience. So now we can move on to the latest generation, PlayStation 5, uh, which there is not much we need to do here because Sony did not do anything outside of changing the paper, the box art. They straight up just opened this B up in Photoshop and they just splashed some white where the blue was, did a little invert on the logo, made sure they backspaced the four and put a five. And that's what we've got for PlayStation 5 cases and box art. Now, I remember at the time when Sony revealed this on the PlayStation blog, there was a lot of criticism because everyone was like, wow, really? Like so far all the fan mock-ups were, uh, all the fan mock-ups were all these things that we were clearly not going to get like uh, black cases or going back to clear cases or um, some sort of wacky color combo. And I would agree that maybe black would have been a, a cool way to go, like a transparent, like sort of frosted black. But the point is Sony showed this, everyone was like, wow, that's lame. But there is a benefit, which is that these cases are straight up PlayStation 4 cases. So they share the cases between PS4, PS5. That's good for long-term for collectors that are again, uh, buying stuff on the secondhand market. You don't necessarily have to worry or be on the lookout for a specific PlayStation 5 case. As far as I can see and as far as I can authenticate, um, this, is, this genuinely is something where these are OEM cases across both platforms. It really is just the box art that you're going to need to make sure that you complete your PlayStation 5 games because this is also something where there's not very, not many games that have manuals or will have a second disc in place. But we can say, and this is one thing I also don't have on hand, it's the uh, PlayStation VR 2 labeling. PS VR 2 just came out, and so discs are only just now being printed for some of the publishers that are actually shipping physical PS VR 2 games. But that is uh, a situation where there will be a nice big gray bar below the PS5 logo that will say it's a PlayStation VR 2 game, either mode compatible or PS VR 2 required. 
And that, for the most part, is our ridiculous, over-explained history of PlayStation cases and box art, which we did not, of course, touch on everything. But with NTSC standard black label games and for what Sony was doing with their accessories and things like that and some of the, um, you know, fringe cases that you may run into more often than not, that was essentially everything. Now, again, I think my favorite uh, pound for pound would be PlayStation 3 right below that PlayStation 2. Also like Vita and PSP a lot, uh, but PS4, PS5, not bad cases, just that they are, you know, they're certified bitch made. They get damaged pretty easily. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.